Hi, welcome to Chavista Chronicles from Caracas. This is episode number seven, and my name is Jesus Rodriguez. This week we're going to talk about economy, of course, uh, the National Dialogue Table, the Guaido Gate, Trust Rojos Edition, and we're going to end up talking about uh, some international issues. So, yes, to make it shorter this time, I want to talk about economy, and of course, I, I have to mention again uh, the problem of inflation and the crazy phenomena that is happening in recent weeks in Venezuela, in which the dollar is actually going down. I mean, uh, the dollar reached a couple of weeks ago like 25,000 bolivars per dollar, and currently is around 19,000 or 18,000. So uh, most of the retailers and retailers uh, adjusted their prices based on that 25,000 bolivars per dollar. And the prices have been going up like crazy in recent weeks. This regarding that the dollar is going down. So what that means is that uh, like doing groceries uh, three weeks ago might cost you a small grocery uh, of vegetables and things like that might cost you like uh, let let's say like like ten bucks and right now uh, the same thing costs you like fourteen so that's to give you an idea on how bad it is uh, and if you uh, and if you take into consideration that the minimum wage is is two dollars per month uh, uh, that's something complicated. But anyway, I mean, uh, the, the Venezuelan people are finding ways to survive, to, you know, to pass this hard period. And, of course, the government is trying to, to help with the club and with the patria system. And talking about the club, and that's another thing that I wanted to mention, is that uh, this last week uh, the U.S. government again sanctioned some people connected with this uh, uh, Colombian uh, businessman, uh, which last name is uh, Saab, and he was a big provider for the CLAP program of, you know, food uh, uh, that was imported for the CLAP program by the Venezuelan government. So the the OFAC uh, from the Treasury in the U.S function like two or four more people connected to that grouping in Colombia. So they are trying basically to strangle uh, the CLAP program. But one thing that I hear um, yesterday uh, was, uh, and it was in an interview made uh, given by President Chavez to President, a former President Rafael Correa from Ecuador for his TV show in RT. That is a nice interview that I uh, encourage you to read, but I haven't found a, a, a translation for, uh, from the interview. Whenever we have it, we will post it in Orinoco Tribune. But basically, going back to the club, he said that, uh, President Maduro said that uh, currently club is not using anything imported. I haven't seen a club box or a clap back in recent days, so I'm not sure about uh, how true that uh, announcement is, but coming from President Maduro, I believe that that should be very close to reality, so let's see what happens. But, if, but I, I, I'm I, uh, among the ones with the impressions that we are moving towards that direction. We are moving towards, you know, because we don't have too many options, I mean, towards you know, self-sufficiency. So that's, that was a nice announcement from President Maduro. Uh, let's see if that translates into reality uh, uh, in the next weeks or days or maybe months. Uh, but anyway, I mean, the sanctions are still there. Uh, now talking about the National Dialogue Table, which is a great move from President Maduro in political, uh, you know, in the political scenario. Uh, everyone, I have to tell you that everyone, at least regular Venezuelans, not connected to high-ranked, very high-ranked uh, politicians, uh, uh, we were surprised at this decision. 
and it's true that the initiative is, uh, was based uh, in uh, some small uh, parties from the opposition that do not represent more than nine seats in the National Assembly currently. But uh, in recent days, more opposition uh, actors have been joining this initiative, like uh, this uh, evangelical uh, politician, Bertucci, which ran for the last presidential election, and he was in third place. And he, I believe that he received almost one million votes. So in uh, and in that grouping also is uh, uh, Henry Falcon, which runs against President Maduro and and was in second place. And I believe that he was also he received something close to two million votes. So we are talking if we are talking in terms of votes, uh, I mean those represented in this national uh, dialogue table represent a big chunk of you know uh, Venezuelan. Uh, preferences. So let's see what happens. I am on the ones that believe that uh, what is needed is that most of the opposition uh, parties join this dialogue because the Norway option, right now that we are comparing it with this really national negotiation option, is way better because uh, you know, if we go back to the to the Norway uh, talks, we're gonna always. I mean, I'm talking about chavistas. We're gonna always have to crash with the reality that we are negotiating with someone that is that do not take decisions. I mean, basically, we are going to negotiate with the puppets of the U.S. government, and at the end of the day, whatever we reach is going to be. To have to be approved uh, by Washington, and that put us in a you know a dead end. So I am on the ones that believe that this new national dialogue table is uh, an option. President Maduro has said that he is hoping for you know keep moving on the Norway talk. Uh, and that, but also he has said that he's open uh, for any other parties from the opposition to join this national dialogue table. I hope that this move uh, might be uh, uh, that we are. I believe that we're going to hear, keep hearing about this national dialogue table for the next months. So, so now talking about the. Guaido Gate and uh, Rastrojo Edition. Uh, I already talked about that last week, but new photos have emerged, new information has emerged, and we have posted that information in Orinoco Tribune. But the truth is that uh, every day more connections, more facts appear uh, connecting Juan Guaido with this very uh, the worst of the worst paramilitary organization in Colombia called uh, uh, Los Rastrojos. And, uh, and the scandal, I believe that it, that is worse in Colombia, in Colombia than in Venezuela, uh, because basically what all this information has been showing is that this paramilitary organizations coordinated with the Colombian presidency in order to have Guaido participating in this concert in Cúcuta in February. So that put uh, the presidency of Colombia in very bad, in very bad uh, you know, position, even for Colombian standards, which everyone knows that, that uh, I mean, the Colombian government has been uh, connected for years with paramilitary organizations and uh, narco-traffic organizations. So that's why a lot of people call uh, Colombia a narco-state. So, uh, so even uh, within that framework, this is a scandal in Colombia. So I believe that is, that's important. And of course, uh, we are trying also to, you know, uh, focus. Uh, our attack against uh, Guaido 
towards that direction too. I mean, how is possible that this guy uh, uh, that is supposed, supposedly, according to him, the president of Venezuela or president in charge of whatever is capable to reach an agreement with these kind of criminal organizations that have Casas de Pique. Uh, and Casas de Pique are basically houses in which they cut all the people that they kill in pieces in order for not one to recognize them. So those are the Casas de Pique that are famous in Colombia. Uh, and, and, and this guy, Juan Guaido, reached an agreement with these guys to transport him from from the border uh, of Venezuela with Colombia to some place uh, near Cucuta. So, so it's terrible. Uh, we're gonna keep seeing uh, information about it, but but there's not too much to to say uh, about that. And just to finish, uh, a couple of international issues that I believe that are important, and the, the United Nations General Assembly that is happening uh, these next few days in New York, and a lot of friends of Venezuela have been organizing activities, protesting uh, war, protesting sanctions, and that kind of stuff, but uh, a few days ago, a couple of days ago, President Trump announced a meeting, an international meeting about Venezuela in the framework of the uh, United Nations uh, General Assembly. So I encourage everyone in the U.S. to try to organize and protest and make noise uh, against this crazy meeting that who knows uh, how it's going to end up. So let's see what happened. But, uh, the U.S. is desperate because of the situation in the Persian Gulf and, the, and with Saudi Arabia. Uh, there's no enough oil. That's why the prices are going are keep going up. And uh, the U.S. government needs Venezuelan soil more than ever. So uh, the desperation of not being able to get rid of Maduro and uh, the need of oil might uh, bring uh, crazy, crazier decisions uh, in this meeting. So we have to pay attention to what happened in New York this week. And uh, just to finish, I want to mention that uh, this week we had this uh, first international woman, uh, international congress of women for peace that was organized by the PSUD uh, within the framework of the Sao Paulo Forum, and it was a success. They came like uh, like 300 delegates from like 70 countries, and uh, Thierry Levache, a uh, very well-known activist from the U.S., was planning to come to uh, to participate in this in this congress, and, and, and we were planning to meet uh, with her, and, uh, and we asked her to give us an interview, and we already were planning how to do it when she was told that she, I mean, when she was told that she could not board uh, uh, the airplane from Medellin to Caracas because of visa issues and because of the sanctions that forbid her to find alternative flights to Caracas. So she had to went back to, to the U.S. Uh, from Medellin uh, a few days ago, and she wrote a nice uh, recount of the events uh, that we posted, that we published in Orinoco Tribune. So that's it for now. Thank you for listening to us. I encourage you to, to, to visit Orinoco Tribune and spread the word about the work that we do that I believe is more, more necessary than ever, you know, providing information in English about Venezuela, uh, so without any sort of, uh, you know, founding from the Venezuelan government or for corporations or from whatever. I mean, we are basically doing this uh, out of donations, and we are planning to keep doing that as much as we can, but uh, but let's see what happens. We uh, are planning to make a big fundraising uh, for uh, the November, because in November is when our contract with our hosting service finished. So we're going to need to raise some money to make Orinoco Tribune better and keep moving forward. So
so uh, we will keep you updated. Thank you again for listening to us, and bye-bye.